Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another shader tutorial. Today, we are going to be looking at deforming our mesh. Previous episode, we changed the texture on top of it. This time, we're actually going to play with the geometry. So if we have a quick look at this while it's playing, I'm going to remove the maximize on play. We have an object that just that waves like a flag when you click on it. You see the outline is actually matching to the deformation. But this thing is calculated on the GPU only, and it's really important to know that. This means that your game logic and your game physics are not going to take care or actually care about this at all. If you just like take a sphere right here, I'm going to put a rigid bunny on it. It doesn't care about the deformation. This is calculated only on the GPU and it doesn't really move, as you can tell. So without further ado, let's get right into making this thing. I'll be deleting what I currently have and we'll be making it from scratch. We have a typical Unity plane right here, and this is more than four vertex. So, of course, there's one right here, right there, right there, and right here. But there's also other vertex in the middle. It looks a little bit like this if you can see the collider. All right, so without further ado, let's just jump into making this thing. I'll be creating a new material. This material is going to be a simple deformation. And again, new unlit shader. This is going to be a simple deformation. Same name, I'll just be keeping that convention. And let's drag and drop our simple deformation right on top of our plane. Now we're going to double click on simple deformation, the shader, and change the name at the very top. So N3K, simple deformation. We're now ready to go back in the game and apply this to our shader. And here we go. And today we're also going to be playing around with some built-in values. Just like last time we played around with the sin, the sin time. Um, today we're going to be playing with object to world. And let me explain to you something really quickly. When we actually go through the, uh, the vertex shader, we don't receive the 3D position of the object in the world. We actually receive it in a object format. So it's like a whole, a whole new uh, coordinate system. So we receive it in what we call the object format. Then if we use object to world, on those coordinates, we're going to be able to receive the 3D position of those vertex in the world, so in the game scene. This is what we're going to be using today to just make a little bit of deformation. We didn't have to use this, I just want to introduce it, and I felt like this could be a good opportunity. Alright, so let's open up the simple information. We don't even have to worry about any of that. We know that we're doing deformation, we're modifying the geometry, so we want to be right here in the vertex shader. Now this is going to look like super easy, and it actually is, but let's have a look at what we have here. The first line we get right here is O.Vertex, so the position of our vertex is going to equal Unity Object, so that's our object space, to Clip Position. And this is basically just a macro to say, take the coordinates we have in Object Space, that's what we get at first, and then match it to my screen pixel so I can actually see it at the proper uh, placement. So we go from the Unity Object coordinate to the actual screen space. Now, I'm going to go just in between them and actually declare myself a float 3. This float 3 is going to be for the world position. Now to get the world position, what we have to do is to actually multiply our current view metrics, so the one we receive in uh, object space, and we need to actually multiply it with the object to world metrics. So we're going to do multiply, so mole, Mole stands for multiply. There is a lot of other keywords like this. I just I'm discovering them at the same time as you. So uh, right here, I would type in the object to world that we saw earlier. So object to world like this. But since the new Unity came out, well, not really new, but uh, a little while ago, they replaced the object to world by Unity object to world, just like this. And this change is uh, is actually done automatically. So if you had like shader in the past that used the object to world the previous version, it's going to upgrade and you know change your code for the Unity object to world. And then uh, we're going to be using the vertex we receive in parameters, so v.vertex, just like this. And let me explain why we want to be using this one and not that one. That one already got modified. This one is already in screen space, so it's already uh, you know it's ready to be rendered on your player screen. That's not the actual matrix we want, that's not the object matrix, that's like the screen space, that's the proper placement at the end. However, the one right here, the one in receiving parameter, still has the original values from the object matrix, and that's why we want to be using this one. So I can say XYZ because I only want to affect the XYZ component. 
since we're a float three. This thing would return you by default, it would return you a x, y, z, w, so like a vector four, but we only need three floats for the world position. So now we have our world position, um, what could we do with it? There is a lot of things we could do with it, and we're going to do a lot of things in the future shader, but today we are only going to be using it in some kind of formula to create a wave. We're going to be using this to modify a formula in which we deform the mesh. But before we go any further, let's just say that uh, let's just say this thing isn't here. I'd like to show you something real quick. So we said that this right here is the, is like almost ready to be rendered. It's actually ready to be rendered, and we have the proper position. What if we do o dot vertex dot y? So we only modify the y, and we do say plus equal one. What's going to happen? I don't know if you saw it, but our mesh went up. Or it went down actually. Did it went up or down? Feels like it went down. So we'd have to do a minus equal y for it to go up. As you can tell, we're actually modifying this thing. We're modifying the position of the vertex. All of them right now. That's what we're doing. And if you have a look at the pivot, the object is still a little bit below that. I mean, it's right here, and the mesh is a little bit above, so if you have any mechanic, if you have any objects on top of this, they're going to be like going through the floor, basically. Now if we go a little bit further, what if we use the sin time like we did yesterday with a pixel shader? We get a nice floating platform. And like I said earlier, if you want to create a sphere and put it, say, here, it is not going to care about the fact that it's moving or not, so it's just going to do its thing and the collider is going to stay at the same place. But hey, we get a nice movement right here. Alright, all right. so let's discard this. Let's actually get our position back and create that wave. So what we could do to create that wave is only play with the, the Y component again, so all that vertex that Y. And we could say plus equal sin. Again, we're using a sin operation, but this time it's the one that takes parameters. So you can put it into um, parentheses like this. Now, what could we do here? We could say world position dot x. So we're making, a, we're actually getting that value based off the world position dot x. If we go over here, our mesh is actually deformed based on the position dot x in the world. So if we just move it like this, you're going to see that since we're moving this thing, it actually deforms itself. So this is only based on the position of the world. Now to make this move automatically, we could actually add one more parameter that changes every frame, and that is something like sin time or time dot w. Time dot w is um, is something that increments. It's like time dot time in C sharp Unity, basically. And just like this, we recreated the nice little flag effect, the formation effect, call it whatever you want. We're playing around with the vertex and we're modifying them, so that is fairly cool if you ask me. Alright guys, this is actually going to be everything for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.